there. Uh, so today I would like to talk to you about spotting people with personality disorders or people who are a little off when you're house sitting. Uh, this is really important. Uh, I've been a house sitter now for two years uh, with a few pauses because of a pandemic and uh, I've learned the hard way that it really helps to be able to tell if someone's just a little bit off early so you don't take a house sit as opposed to finding out when you know something goes wrong and they don't handle it as well as they should or when you're in the house and you realize that they're overstepping boundaries and things like that now I do want to preface ahead of time I am not picking on people with personality disorders here you might have a personality disorder that's you know treated uh, you, you might have emotional or whatever issues we all do uh, what I'm talking about is spotting people that might make your life difficult just because uh, someone has a personality disorder that they're dealing with doesn't mean that they're not going to run into other people who haven't sorted their stuff out who can make their life miserable okay now with house sitting this is really important because there are so many things that uh, can go wrong you're you're very vulnerable in a house sit you are trusting someone to go into their house and to it's mutual like they trust you too but for you as the house sitter you are trusting someone to go into the house and that their house will be safe that their pets will be safe for you to take care of you know they they won't be aggressive etc etc and, and that uh, the experience you'd hope will be a good one and as is promised so just to go through this um, generally when you take a house sit if, if you do it all the time like I do you use a house sitting site but you might be someone who just hears about a house sit from a mate you know hey I've got a friend in France and they'd really like someone to look after their horse two sheep and a donkey can you do it now number one rule here no matter how you find out about the sit don't accept it immediately whatever you do just don't do that it doesn't matter if it looks like a stunning villa in Tuscany it doesn't look like it's you know a beautiful uh, let's just say I've seen a yacht in the med don't take it straight away without talking to your potential host that might mean the sit goes that might mean you know that you miss it better to miss it than to end up having an awful house sitting experience trust me when it goes wrong it can go very wrong and I'll do another video about one of my nightmare sits uh, later for you so first thing you have to do is talk to the person preferably uh, you start off messaging whether or not it's on a uh, you know website that you find them through or whether or not it's through a friend you, you should be going back and forth with them just to have a bit of a chat about who they are now if it's on a website you would have seen the description you would have seen the sit ad but there are a few things to keep an eye out for there initially are they talking about how the sit would benefit the sitter as well as their animals so are they actually engaging with someone are they trying to sell their house to you and their pets to you are they showing you really nice pictures of their pets and their house are they saying the things that you could maybe do while you're in the area are they interested to engage basically if they're not if the the ad is mainly all about them and their grand mansion with no mention of there's a fine line here but if there's no mention of the area and how you know it would be nice to visit where they're at it's a bit of a red flag if the advertisement is in all caps don't go there I've gone there once it's not fun so <laughs> keep an eye for spelling and punctuation if someone can't be bothered to have proper spelling or punctuation on their ad it's probably a no okay so that, there's that sorry dog leg there back to conversing with the person if you're messaging them and they're coming back to you and back and forth with just blurts like if they're verbal diarrheaing at you and it doesn't feel like they're engaging with you red flag if you're trying to it's, it's not necessarily a, a be all and end all but I tend to keep a little you know tally and if these start to add up past about three then I'm probably going to think about not taking the sit if you're uh, you know trying to arrange and you should always arrange some form of video call and some form of walk through the house you need to see what you're looking after 
just to make sure that it's safe, that the animals are in good order, that the sit is exactly what the person promised, especially if you're a vulnerable person, especially if you're sitting on your own, especially if you're a woman, you don't wanna walk into a situation that's unsafe. If you're trying to arrange that call and they're playing silly buggers with time, red flag. Now by that, I mean, let's just say, hey, I'm available Monday at one o'clock and I'm available Tuesday and Wednesday at the same time. And they come back and say, I can only do four o'clock, you know, tomorrow. Now that's okay, but if they're not flexible at all and they stick to that and they say, that's the only time I can talk to you, uh, probably a bit of an issue. Or if you make a time and they keep holding you up, they, they literally turn up late to the call or they just forget about it, but repeatedly. There's a power play going on there. Usually, you don't wanna be a part of that. There's red flag. Okay, so you're on the call and we're gonna talk about grooming a little bit. You should have, you know, at least combed your hair, at least tried to put on something that's sort of nice. You're selling yourself to someone a little bit. They should at least do the same. If, if you're talking to someone who hasn't bothered to comb their hair or hasn't bothered to change out of their pajamas, or if they've got, as I've had once or twice, crumbs all over their face or food still on their face, and they're talking to someone they've never met before, red flag. Um, if they're talking to you and they, at the very beginning of the conversation, all they want to talk about is a previous bad sitting experience, huge red flag. That's like going on a date with someone and you meet them at the restaurant and all they want to do is bag out their ex. If you know someone for a while, you're going to hear about the bad ex. You don't need to hear about it straight away. And if, if, it's a, if it's a person who's had house sitters over a long period of time, they'll, they'll have some dodgy stories, much like anyone who house sits will have some dodgy stories. You're not gonna bring them up straight away, okay? You don't wanna be compared to the ex. So, sounds a bit weird, but you get what I mean, right? So there's that. Then there's, if they're telling you about a personal problem or illness, and that's the thing they lead with, bit of a red flag if it has nothing to do you're you're going to be coming to look after their house and their animals more than likely animals um if you don't really need to know in that initial interaction about uh their you know carbuncles or you don't need to know about their irritable bowel syndrome you know, they're not gonna be in the house, they're gonna be somewhere else. You should be talking on point about animals, about maintaining the house to the standard they expect, and about how you can mutually meet each other's needs. So, huge red flag there. Um, if they won't give you a tour of the house, now this is so important, you really need to see if they will just walk you around with a phone. It doesn't matter if they're doing it with a laptop, uh, as much as they can, you just need a bit of a tour of the house to see what state it's in. Um, uh, the best example I can give here that I've encountered is uh, there was a house advertised as a stately home. Two cats, I adore cats, I was really excited. The pictures actually looked really lovely. Um, but on the tour, there was uh, bowls of cat food in the bed that they said we'd be sleeping in and wet cat food. Um, their bathroom was black with mold. There was uh, outbuildings with asbestos that had fallen in. Uh, there was what I could only term as a murder dungeon for a basement where the washing machine was that had a, a visible dead rodent in it. Um, None of these were in the picture. The picture was obviously, all the pictures were obviously from the initial real estate site when they bought the house. Since they'd taken it on, it had turned into something else. So very, very important. You need that tour of the house. Okay, so that's great. Um, so there, there's the tour of the house. And if afterwards, so they're, they're the main things, but if at any time, Anytime you get a, a squiggly feeling, trust your gut. Like if there's something that's off, there's probably something that's off. It's your safety. 
and that's really really important I used to have sit with my husband Tony so there's usually two of us and the really great thing is we're both on the call and one of us will pick up something that's a bit off while the other one is talking so but if you're on your own go with your gut trust your gut okay if you meet the person in person and you get even the slightest bit of like squiggly feeling don't do it no so you've done this call and usually someone who's a little bit little bit skew if will be trying to like lock you in straight away they'll be almost trying to bully you into saying yes you'll immediately do the sit now the way I stall if I'm a little bit unsure of the person is I'll say I have to check my travel plans and I'll say I'll get back to them as soon as I can I usually give them you know on any call I'll give people very clear parameters so I'll say look I'm gonna check my travel plans and I'll get back to you within two hours I hang up the call I look over how many little checks I have against that red flag thing and if there's more than three I won't do the sit it doesn't matter how beautiful the house is it doesn't matter how adorable the pets are if the person you're sitting for is off they can leave you a horrific review which would ruin your chances of future amazing sits on websites they might even, as I've heard of, this hasn't happened to me, but it's happened to other people, not even be going on holiday. This happens. So uh, sitters get to a place and find out that they're basically a free indentured servant for the space of a month. Red flag, right? You know, uh, you know, it, it would have been great to, to um, cancel that one ahead of time, I guess. <laughs> I'm just remembering all the details of how bad it was. I'll have to I'll have to share that one later too. Um, so yeah, so you've said to them you're going to check your travel plans. To cancel, you can outright just say, "Look, I can't do this sit." If you're someone who has trouble saying no, the best way to do it is just to say, "Look, um, I can't get flights," or "I've had a competing sit that I've applied for earlier that I thought was completely cancelled." They've actually turned up later and they've asked me to do it. You can you can use that as an excuse. Any white lie works. Um, this is a social white lie. It's better than having someone going ballistic at you. You don't need an, you don't need that in your life. You you just really don't. And it can happen if the person's really off. I've I've even tried to do all the polite stuff and I've had repeated emails coming my way saying, why don't you like me? What's wrong? You know, what's wrong with you? So it was a good thing I cancelled that sit and didn't look after their animals. Oh, the other thing, if the way they treat their animals is weird when you talk to them or in the video uh, call, huge red flag. So we had one person, and this will go down in the Hall of Fame as the weirdest thing I have ever seen. She mouth kissed her cat on the video and the cat was ill. It had uh, like a big scar like here that was healing. It had a cone on its head and she outright mouth kissed it. Needless to say, we didn't take that sit. <laughs> so if there's anything odd, no matter how much you like the look of the pets, no matter how much you want to look after a pug, no matter how much you love the look of the house, don't take it. Um, negative reviews or you know someone bad mouthing you because they've got a few issues they haven't dealt with in the house sitting world can really ruin you know uh whatever your plans are if you're like me and you're doing it continuously it, it can ruin everything um or it could get you kicked off a site if they start to make up stories about you um oh a final thing while i'm at it if there's a video a camera in the house and they're not willing to discuss turning it off while you're in the house, you know, and you can negotiate there. Some people like are really anxious about leaving their pets. You could say, look, if you turn off that video camera, but we'll send you videos at set times of the day. So, you know, we're there with the animals or we'll do X and Y, you know, there's always negotiation or if it's in the main part of the house, but it's not in the bedrooms. If there's make sure you ask about video cameras i've heard about video cameras pointing at beds um i've heard about things like that you need you need to ask about that that one's a massive red flag you don't want to be a single woman house sitting for someone and to have a video camera pointed at your bed while you're sleeping it happens it you know so another red flag so basically make your excuses 
Um, I'd really advise if you are dealing with someone that gives you a squirrely feeling, make it not about them. So when you're making your excuses and you're saying you can't take the sit, don't go, you're kind of weird, I don't want to do that. Make it about just something situational, circumstantial. Hey, I've got a family drama just came up. Hey, I can't, I can't come because I can't get a flight. Um, you know, my car broke down. It doesn't matter. I know it's a white lie. I know some people are uncomfortable with that. But if you just go, hey, you're weird, that's not going to wash. And that could go wrong with you. You could have that person claiming to the house sitting site or to your mutual friend or whatever that, you know, you did have said things that you didn't do. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I, I will do a video with a much more, uh, you know, specific example of a sit that went wrong uh, because I ignored all the red flags. Uh, so you've got an idea of what that is. Uh, in the future but for now um, yeah you know happy house sitting and you know may you pat lots of pets bye